Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you the basics of adding transitions to your video clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So when you start editing your video project and you have multiple clips that you pull into your timeline to make your final video, you're going to end up with these little dividers between the different pieces on your timeline. So when you hit play in your timeline and you jump from one cut to another, you're going to have a very abrupt change. Now, in many cases, there's actually nothing wrong with this instantaneous cut from one frame on one video clip to another frame on another video clip. But it is quite abrupt, and you might decide that you prefer there to be more of a gradual change or a transition from one video clip to the other. So the absolute simplest way to go ahead and handle this is to add a cross dissolve between your clips, which you can easily do by right clicking on the border between any two clips on your timeline. So wherever you have this selectable border, you can left click on it and you'll see the border between your two clips. You can right click on that same border and then you can do add six frame up to 60 frame cross dissolve. So this is basically going to reflect the duration of your transition and the speed is dependent on how many frames per second your video is going to be playing back on when you export it. So a 30 frames per second video means that a 30 frame cross dissolve is going to take one second to complete. If you want to know exactly how fast the frames are playing for your video, then you can go to uh, the file menu and then you go down to project settings and you can see what you have it set for your timeline frame rate and your playback frame rate. Now that's how fast it's going to play back in the video editor. That doesn't necessarily mean when you export the video it's going to be the exact same. The final frame rate you'll see over on the deliver tab where you have this frame rate for exporting your video or if you select YouTube mode you'll see the frame rate here as well. Depending on what your timeline frame rate was set to you may have more options than just 30 frames per second here. But usually speaking, your timeline frame rate and your deliver export frame rate are going to be the same and want to be the same for consistency. So when you want to add that cross dissolve, you don't even need to left click here. You can just right click and then choose your number of frames. So 30 frame cross dissolve. Now, in this case, you can see that there's not enough uh, basically space on either side of the clips that we brought into the timeline. I just dragged the entire stock clip here. But the thing about transitions is that they need a little bit of buffer space in order to actually have the transition. So there has to be more video information than what you have in the timeline here. And that's why we have the option to trim the clips. So we pull a little bit of video information from uh, what's showing in the timeline and then that gets used in the transition instead. So so in this case, that information is still going to be here, but it's going to be used up by this transition uh, rather than being part of the base cut in the timeline. So if I hit space here, uh, we can see we get that smooth transition. So let's go back here again and hit play. And we'll see we get that nice cross dissolve. Basically, one clip fades out, the other clip fades in, and that's really all there is to it. Now you can see because we have clips linked together that there's also a cross dissolve added to this audio clip. You don't have to have the cross dissolve on the audio clip, but if you do, it's going to make the sounds or music in that clip fade in and fade out depending on if it's the clip leaving the scene. In this case, the one on the left side is leaving. And then the clip on the right side is fading in. So two different pieces of audio side by side here with a cross dissolve you would have a fade out of the left audio and a fade in of the right audio as well. So if you don't want that extra transition for the audio, what you could do, I hit Control Z, and you can uncheck this linked selection here. So when we do that, we're only going to be selecting one track at a time when we click on a clip, not the other clips that are linked together like this audio clip. You can see the linked symbol there. This audio is part of the video for that clip. So now if I right click on the border here and we do 30 frame cross dissolve, trim clips, we'll see uh, the clips still get trimmed and the audio gets pushed over, but we only actually add the transition to the video track. We don't add any cross dissolve to the audio. Okay, I'm going to hit control Z a couple times here. So let's go over to the effects library and I do want to show us so now for adding all of the rest of the transitions, we should open up the effects library. So you can find that in the top left hand section on the edit tab by clicking up here and you'll find your transitions under video transitions. And you can scroll down here and find all kinds of different transitions. 
including the fusion transitions, which are relatively new. And on the cut page, which is just a different workflow for editing your videos, you can also find your transitions, but they're just up here in this transitions window. So if you click here, you're going to find access to all of the same transitions you would find on the cut page as well. So over on the cut page, if we take one of these transitions and we try to move them over the border, we're basically both sides of this cut have no extra buffer information, hence the red line when we click on it. And we try to drag one of these transitions over there. Uh, at the moment, it's actually not going to give us an indicator of what's going on. If we let go of this drag and hold left click, then you'll just see it disappear. A transition doesn't pop up. Now, usually in the past, you'd get that same kind of trim suggestion pop up, like when we right click on it and do 30 frame cross dissolve, and then we'll say add transitions. But at the moment, that seems to be a minor issue. So just make sure you don't get caught up on that. And if you can't add the transition in between your two video clips by dragging and dropping at the moment, most likely all you need to do is to trim one or both sides of the clips so that they show green. I would make it at least half a second on each side. So T to go into trim mode. You can also click up here and then we drag to the left over here. So half a second and 30 frames per second would be 15 frames. So I'll just go a little bit more than that. And then on the right side, I'm going to left click on the right border. And then I'm going to pull this in about the same amount. And then with this right clip, because it has audio track, I want to make sure that I go back into linked audio selection so that when we trim the clips, it trims both of them. So that when I trim the clips, it's going to trim both the audio and the video together. Uh, so I'm going to left click on this right border between the two clips. I'm going to pull this in. Ah, okay. Actually, I'm going to hit Control Z T to go back into trim mode. And now when we trim, it should stay in place while trimming the clip a little bit. So let's pull that in about a second there. And now when we drag our video transitions on the border between these two clips, uh, we should get the expected result. So if I drag a oval iris here, Okay, and it seems I need to retrim this clip. I must have hit Control Z a couple extra times. So you can just make sure that when you left click on the border here, both sides show green, and then you'll probably be able to add your transition. So let's go ahead and drag a random one like over Iris on the border here. Uh, you can see that a transition can be added equally on both sides if you hover over the border. You can also add it to the right side of your two clips or the left side. So this is mostly a timing thing. When do you want the transition to occur? Should this transition overlap with the video information from the right side, the left side, or take from each side equally by putting it in the middle here? So I'm just going to let go of my left click hold on the border in the middle there so that it's equal on both sides. I can hit spacebar now to experience our transition. So most of the transitions are just going to have some simple way of having one clip fade out and the other one fade in. But there's different kind of more unique ways of doing this. If you want the more interesting transitions, you're probably going to want to come down here to fusion transitions. So you could look at stuff like uh, tunnel of light. Oh, by the way, if you hover over a transition at any part of its preview, you can actually see how the transition is going to look like before you add it to your video clips. So this is really handy. You don't actually need to add your video transition in yet. But uh, once you add your transition, you can, of course, see the final result by going over here to the left, hitting spacebar and watching your transition playback. Once again, the fusion transitions a little bit trickier to render, so it may not play back in full real time, depending on what kind of specs your machine has. But you can always scrub through it and get an idea of how it's going to look. So likewise, the process over on the cut page is going to be pretty similar. We just find a transition we like in the transitions box. So maybe this time brightness flash. Of course, we can still hover through it and kind of preview how it's going to look. And then we just drag it on the border between those two clips. Just like on the edit page, though, you should left click on the line between your two cuts. Make sure that that's that actual buffer information from the source file that isn't being used up by the timeline so that there's some uh, video information to pull from to make the transition work. And when you get your transition dropped in, you can hit spacebar and uh, see it back in the timeline as well. Now, all of these transitions are also editable in the inspector. So if you left click on a transition 
and you go up to the inspector top right, you should see a transition tab. And for these transitions, you'll have several settings. So for this brightness flash, we can make the brightness go up even higher. So let's just increase that and see how that makes it different. So we can see this is quite blinding. Seems to be at its peak about 86% making the screen fully white. So the background becomes a lot harder to see. That may be preferable depending on how pronounced you want the effect to be. You can also lower this very far down so that it's a much more minor effect as well. And you can still see most of the background while it transitions. Okay, the last thing we can kind of point out for this video is that for the fusion transitions, that's going to be all of the transitions that fall under this fusion transition category, that you may notice when you're over in the inspector that there is a go to the fusion page button here. So if you have these transitions selected and you go to the fusion page, you can either do it manually at the bottom, clicking on that page button, or you can click over here then you'll actually be able to see the nodes that make up that transition. Now, if you actually want to edit it further, it's going to be a bit more complicated and definitely beyond this video. Uh, but you'll be able to find the effect here. If we double click on the brightness flash group, we can see everything that goes into it here. In this case, I'm going to have to kind of expand this group window because I think there's just more nodes than what it's showing. Okay, actually, no, maybe maybe this specific one actually just does have a few nodes. So you can kind of imagine that with this effect to make this transition, there's a bit of dissolving from one clip to the other kind of like that cross dissolve at the start. But then there's also this added brightness saturation effect that goes on here. But then in order to make the brightness and but then in order to get the clip to look like this in the middle you can see that there's also these brightness saturation adjustments and i imagine and we can test it here that these settings here are exactly the same properties that you would see over on the edit page inspector for that transition so you can see how when i edited it in the fusion page that it got reflected up here so in most cases the actual settings you really need to worry about for your transitions even the fusion transitions are just going to be exposed here but you'd likely be able to find them on the fusion page as well if you really want to dive into it so there's one other way for adding transitions on your video and audio clips which is that if you hover over a video clip or a audio clip you'll see these little white notches in the top left and top right so these allow you to basically fade in or fade out those clips uh, individually so it's not like a cross dissolve where you'd be affecting both sides at once but rather just the clip you're hovering over. So if I pull in this white notch to the right over here and we go to the start, hit play, well, we're gonna see that the opacity of that video clip transitions from zero to one. So 1.0 being fully visible and zero being completely invisible. So that's just another simple way you can transition your video clips. I often do that at the beginning and end of my projects because it's just probably the quickest way to do anything. And you can also do it with audio. So, this, so using the white notches for things like music is another simple way to just fade out or fade in music as well. So that's just another simple trick you can use for your transitions. But uh, note that if you're trying to do that between video clips, you're going to have to do it on both sides. So I can pull this white notch to the right. I can pull this white notch to the left. So one on the left, one on the right. And by hitting space and going between the two clips, it fades to black and then fades from black to white which can also be done easily with uh, this transition dip to color. So if we drop dip to color dissolve between our two clips, we could just choose a color like black here and the inspector transition settings. And we'd pretty much get the same result, perhaps even a little bit more accurately because by dropping the dip to color dissolve between those two video clips, it's already evenly distributed between the left side and the right side. Whereas if you control with the notches, you have to be sure you get the same number of frames if you're looking for a even transition between your two clips. So in a nutshell, that is pretty much all of the basics for adding transitions to your clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17.1. I hope this video has helped all of you out there at least a bit. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris and I will see you in my future video content.